Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we're reacting to a video from a cave dive in Mexico, and we're talking about cave diving in Mexico because Mexico. You, just, you just came back from Mexico yesterday. Oh man, it's beautiful there. They, re I know we call High Springs cave country. Yeah. Mexicans Gus, getting Gus, salted listen, by Listen, listen. There's 1,500 plus miles of line alone. <laughs> That's how many cenotes. So I didn't know. I mean, I mean, it was my first time really, you know, being in that Tulum area. Okay, we're you're, we're going there. It's it's like it is cave country. Everything about the whole area you're just driving down the road and every other sign is cenotes 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 and i look forward to us going there and documenting our dives but there's someone who has been going there for years and documenting his dives way better than we'll ever do it which that is, is for sure if it's jonathan bird jonathan bird yeah. from blue world tv we feature blue world tv multiple times in this channel and uh he's in mexico cave diving so i think we take a look and yeah, before we start, so what mm. you're really saying there is if I, they make a new underwater case for the iPhone, this would not, this would be an example of not documenting like Jonathan Bird. Is that no, we, we won't use I'm iPhones, but he, he's masterful. Yeah, this is. All right, let's take a look. Coming up, Jonathan explores part of the longest submerged cave in the place. world. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. I want to go back. I just got back. I swear. <laughs> it's amazing there. The jungle of the Yucatan is filled with mysteries and adventure. For miles and miles, it's only trees with no sign of rivers or lakes. Look at that but thing. there are rivers. They flow underground through vast cave systems. Do I need to In say a few more? Places the ceiling of the cave has collapsed, creating cenotes, entrances to the cave systems. In one cenote called Zapote. Can I just say one thing? I I, I know I just got back. I don't care. Criticize me stopping the video. <laughs> Gus, on all of these, on all of these different cenotes that I saw. Did you see how there's like stairs and platforms? Yeah. So it's not just that they're there in the raw. Right. They build like changing stations, restrooms, perfect places under the shade to put your dry suit on. So they built a giant infrastructure all around. I mean. To make it easier for divers. And look then what you get to see when you enter. Amazing. Everywhere. Okay. We explored unusual formations called cave bells formed by bacteria. But the toxic hydrogen sulfide layer prevented us from going too deep to explore much of the cave. About an hour drive away from Zapote is another cenote. This one will allow us to really explore. Cameraman Todd and I are on an epic adventure to the Yucatan of Mexico. Oh, that's off it there. Of course, whenever we go cave diving in the Yucatan, we meet up with our good friend Christine Lowe, an experienced local cave diving instructor who knows all the good spots. And our adventure begins on a nice, smooth dirt road into the jungle. <laughs> nice, <It's> smooth. <laughs> it is like that. It is like that. <laughs> Soon we arrive at Cenote Nahoch. The owners of the cenote have built a bit of a tourist attraction around Look at it. that thing. They all do. Observation tower and yeah. some zip lines. But for us, it's all about the diving. Oh, Look at yeah. the infrastructure. Nahoch Nachich. Look which at that means thing. giant bird cage yep. is a cave system that stretches over 42 miles and has 36 different cenotes providing access. Cenote wow. Nahoch is right in the center of the whole thing. And they're all on people's private lands. Mm -hmm. So these, it's a really big business for the locals there, right? They, sure. they charge an entrance fee for all of them, but you get massive value. Like Absolutely. a tremendous infrastructure built around these. Take it's, my money. It's, uh, dude, when, when we're going. Like not maybe, like <laughs> that you're saying a yes to. And we're probably going to stay at Patrick Widman's right there above <laughs> his dive shop because everything in his dive shop is literally made for the sidewinder like yeah. which is what you dive yeah and then 
a week of heaven. Let's do it. And we're definitely not going to see much of this huge system in one dive. 42 miles. Christine walks us through the facilities. Then we review the dive plan. A little Mayan lesson, Nohach Nachich means giant bird cage. Giant bird cage? How cool is that? This is my place, baby. <laughs> because there are so many different routes, we have to make a careful plan on where we're going and what is involved. But we can't dive until all the gear is ready. That part's not fun. We did a lot of no. this. is a popular place for cave divers, so they have a really nice setup. Where's Todd's shirt? That's what I want to know. Todd, get with the program. Your uniform, man. Todd's cool, by the way. He's a lawyer. He's super smart. Well, they're diving wet. Um, oh, yeah. I will mention that the caves are warmer than the Florida caves. He hasn't talked about that yet. Mm -hmm. So we're typically around 72 Fahrenheit. And no, I can't convert yeah, I'll, that. Yeah, I'll put the conversion. And there. the Mexican caves, most of them are minimum 74 to 76. Beautiful. Still dry suit, obviously, for me, but, you know, yeah. Finally, the fun part. You've got to get your mask just right, because once you put your helmet on, <laughs> you can't really adjust it. I just want to be back there. I, I could spend a month there. That's how much <laughs> I loved it. Christine down into the crystal clear water. Beautiful. Maybe we do like a residence. We just shoot dive talk from over there for like a month. Prepare to leave the caverns. Okay, I, you're making me pause a lot. <laughs> Listen to this. It's funny you said that. Yeah. I'm going to talk about Patrick again. Patrick Widman. Yeah. He has set it up to where he has customers because it's a two-hour flight, right? Hmm. Basically, we just put a set of gear, mass fins. You know, even maybe an extra harness, and you just leave it there. You have a permanent locker. You fly in, people just come in with their carry-ons, boom, you're diving, diving, diving. Wow. It's set up for just what you said. This no, is but your... I'm just saying, like, we do a residence. Like, we just moved to Mexico for, like, a month. And it's dirt cheap. Exactly. It's unbelievable good value there. Anyway, um, by the way, there I noticed they're all on XD harnesses, which I, I just kind of mm. got to experience on my Sidewinder. They make good stuff. They fit me perfectly. Yeah, yep. it's really nice. Zone where we can see light from the sun, Christine ties off a line. Check that out. The permanent cave lines start a few hundred feet further into the no cave. No flow, minimal keep flow. Water divers from following them. So we start with our own line that leads from there back to the cavern zone. Gus, there's like okay, no so flow. Now, by so the now way. I'm stopping because we do get this comment a lot. Uh, this is a very, very common comment that we get about cave line. Um, the comment sounds something like this. If your life can potentially depend on this line, why don't you use a thick rope? That's kind of what it sounds like. The reason is because we have to tie this line in a lot of places. And imagine if you had like a super thick, like boat tying rope, like I get it that it's stronger and safer that if you have to hang on to it or whatever in flow, it's not gonna break. These nylon lines that we use, are super strong yes but they're easy to maneuver around stuff and you will see the instructor in this case making ties in like a few seconds having to make those ties with a thick rope would be either impossible or a nightmare and imagine bringing in i don't know 400 feet 120 meters exactly. of rope exactly that is thick like what that just that makes no sense this line is the line for cave diving yeah that's why we use. and and i i want to just the only thing to emphasize you said is it's surprisingly everybody ext much stronger than what it looks like in this video right there yeah. like you gotta put you have you need in order to control the line especially when you're yeah. reeling in and you need to pull a lot of tension so we want the line really really yeah. tight you it would be hard i bet you you know what? Really hard to actually break it. You got to pull pocket. that thing extremely hard to break that yeah. line. So I have so, a little bit right here that I use for stuff. It's a little stretchy too. You I, can't break I can't, that. I can't. No I can't. I would I would injure my exactly. hands and not break it. Exactly. This this thing is legit. No way. No. 
Yeah, well said. Good, good point. Since every dive team places their own line from the main line back out of the cave, each team Check always knows when there are other divers in the cave. Imagine doing this with a thick rope. Over, under, pull it back the other way, it locks it, and on you go. Beautiful, by the way. Great technique, of course. Good job. Oh, by the way, look at the cave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the they way, just started. the cave. Yeah. Gus, they just entered it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Reaching the main line, Christine ties our team's reel to the line. Did that. By the way, Jonathan. This is another thing I want to point out. Okay. So the, so everything, even though it, sound, it seems like it doesn't really matter, um, you notice that the reel that she's using comes, it, it's actually connecting to the line that she connected to the main line. It's on that side because if you're following it, I want to use my mouse, if we're coming out from this, for example, completely blind, no visibility, when you hit the reel, you will know that your exit is this way. So she's connecting it to her own line, so then you can follow that all the way to the exit. And notice that this tie right here, the way we tie this up is by coming from the back, going around it, and then above it, and pull this way. So the line is on this side of the rock. Right. So if you're following it, you hit the rock, and then the next line is right there. So there is a technique for that. Uh, and we do get that comment a lot where people are like, why don't you just take a rope? It's not that easy. We spend days of rope or line training when we're cave diving and when we're learning how to cave dive and it's also if you're not coming out blind yeah right look how easy that would be to simply see if my mouse works right yeah. so to right simply there. undo it use. right Go ahead. it's in the front part so right here mm -hmm. you're 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 the, you're the line guy typically your buddy in front of you will help you right yeah. if you're reeling the line i'm going to be in front of you is all i have to do is it's the first thing i hit i just lift this up and it's yep. immediately off the rock. Like, you don't have to untwist it. You literally just lift it. Yep. Boom. That line's now free. And I would put tension on it. And then you would reel it in. Yep. So it doesn't knot. That's what so, you're saying. So, so it doesn't knot. So everything is a technique. And as a reason is what, Gus, I think you were trying to bring out. Correct. It's not like, uh, you know what? Here's a random cool way to tie it. No. This has been thought out, tested by the Eds, by the greats. And they it works. Yeah. And the, the, uh, again, the part is that it looks like you're just wrapping it around a rock and that you're just doing that however you see fit. No, there's actually a technique to do I this. I love and, that point. And that's what Woods, Woody said. If you pull this off the rock, like he mentioned, it, it doesn't get perfect. nutted. It's perfectly straight and you just reel it. And isn't that part of what you it's love awesome. about cave diving? That's my that favorite That there part. is this technique, <laughs> that there is thought to everything. See, exactly. I, I think that's what part of the love of cave divers is not looking at wet rocks but look at look at her trim and her tank and the technique that she has when yep. you work so hard to get that of course you want to use it it's yeah. like you play golf your whole life to get good and then you don't want to golf anymore and by the way some of these techniques are the same that we use in advanced wreck diving right when you're going to penetrate a wreck you have to do tie off to the outside and then going to the wreck. And I think this is one way to tell that your instructor is not a cave diver. I've seen several <laughs> yes. instructors teaching advanced wreck that are like standing on the wreck, literally just tying the rope however Random. they want. It's like, what are you doing? There's right no, now? A, a lot of these advanced wreck instructors, yeah. and this, I know we're sounding, you know, we're sounding cocky right now. It's, but the fact of the matter is, is, they're not doing the tie-offs properly. No. They're not even doing a tie-off all the way to the main ascent line to the boat. Right. So, anyway, yeah, we know. I, I know. <laughs> it, going, cave man. just changes you. Absolutely. Then she places a marker called a cookie on the line. Oh, I love it. That technique. marker has her name on it, so nobody else will take it out by mistake. Should we talk about cookies again? No, <laughs> no, no let it play a little. Yeah. Because I want... By the way, Jonathan... They didn't show it, but the two of them also left a cookie. Jonathan and Todd. Jonathan, yeah. This is unfair. How good your video and it's, lighting is! It's like, look at—you can see the whole cave. How does he do it, Gus? The coach is known as one of the most beautiful caves in the Yucatan, with good reason. Everywhere we look, there are gorgeous formations. See, her finning is so important. There's no flow. Mm -hmm. Patrick just told me, in Gus, some areas, you silt this out. Shallow. And the oh, water week. doesn't completely it fill takes. the cave. Look at so that. So there were huge air pockets above You don't want to go? 
Oh, I would do. Theory, you could stick Wanna go right now? There and have a conversation. You see how? Look at that. However, since these air pockets don't directly connect to the air outside the cave, there's no way of knowing if the air is safe to breathe. How can you not want to do this? I keep saying I want to. No, why not do you? you. How can the people that ask <laughs> us, why do you want to cave dive? And Come I on. asked the same question back to you. How can you not want to do this? See, is it? We're just as much asking, how would you not want to do this? <laughs> as you are saying, why would you want to do this? It's exactly. just magnificent. Unbelievable. I know you want to do it. Oh. I'm not talking about you. But it looks cool, like an upside down puddle above our heads. Jonathan, this As is- As we swim weightlessly through these winding passages, beautiful. it's hard to believe that 15,000 years ago, these passages were dry. Back then, during the last ice age, Look at sea levels were much lower. So the water table in the jungle was lower too. And you're not these in a hurry. Were bone dry. Why would you be we in a hurry there? <laughs> through this cave don't, back then. Like, don't start this. You're not in a hurry underwater there. Like, where are you gonna go? Like, this would be Gus, right? I mean, I, I'm trying, I'm giving Here. him a little bit of a message. I love him. He's my brother. But I'll be like, Gus, I'm going to leave this time. You know how slow I'm going to go when I take you in these? You know why? Where are you going? And look <laughs> around. We're not in there to, like, go on a race. No. We're okay, I'm going to start the video back up. I don't even need his response. And the evidence is here. Slow down. Look at Formations it. hanging from the ceiling called stalactites were created by dripping water almost like icicles of stone mm. when the dripping water hit the floor of the cave the result was stalagmites and as those two formations grow they can meet in the middle forming a column so beautiful yes soon we reach our first jump Look at we're this. going to leave the main line and go down a side passage so we have to hold on we have to talk about this. All right. So he's about to explain what a jump is. So I'm not going to go into that. But what I want to show is that she connected the line to an arrow. So this thing right here is an arrow uh, that we use in cave diving. The arrows always point to the exit. So the idea is if you're following this line and you're coming out in zero visibility, once you hit, so you're following this line, once you hit the arrow, you immediately know that the exit is this way. And the other thing they're going to do is they're going to place cookies. I don't know if they're going to show in the video or not, but you will place cookies right here. So as you get out, you grab your cookie, which tells the rest of your team behind you, I'm out. You don't now, have to look for me. I don't want to, I don't want to confuse you, but guess what? What? They do it a little different in Mexico. So mm. I'm not going to discuss it all. All right. Because but I, me and you, when, That's how when we, we died there, we're going to have a, we're going to do a team discussion. This is what what's the most important thing. Yeah. As long as we know as a team, the methodology that we're going to use, mm -hmm. it's like, we're cool. Some so, people do it on the jump line, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what you wanted yeah, to say? That, yeah. yeah. In Mexico, they tend to do it. But, but the other reason that she's hooked into that arrow is look at the line. It's not going anywhere, mm -hmm. right? It can't slide anywhere. Imagine if she would have put that jump in front of the front arrow, just logic, right? Right. That, that line could slide it could go right, anywhere. So yep. she's locked it in. Make what is called a jump over to another line. The side passages already have permanent lines in them, but they don't connect to the main line because that can be confusing. So we put our own line between them. It's beautiful. Temporarily. And look how she's got Christine her. Christine ties a spool to the main line. Helmet then light. we swim across the While jump, she's doing line work. onto the line on the side passage. You wouldn't keep it up there unless you're doing when so she's gonna turn this jump line ensures that we can find the main line again. So this connect is one it to of her own line Boom. and two. cave one, diving. Two. And Never be rotate and two. Of the line around. that leads all the way to the entrance. See how she took her light back off her helmet? Mm -hmm. So protocol is I'm the line person. Yeah, you can then mount your light because you need your hands, but don't leave it there because you're gonna blind your buddy. So she did her tie off. Now she takes her light back off to continue. Really beautiful technique. Yep. It seems obvious to the cave divers that are watching this, all the stuff Soon we're pausing we for, an amazing but it's not with crazy for most people. Formations known as helictites. Helictites are thin little You're going to fly by this, so you want to stop and look at it with me. Trip formations. I'm just saying, no do you want to stop for a minute when we're diving this what? and take a little video? Uh, no. Do I ever I rush know. you? Like when 
I've heard when we when we were in F the Bahamas I'm, at the Crystal Caves, well, not one time. Because you're scared of Brian. Not oh me. my god! If it was just me, I either because I, Brian was going in front and he's keeping a human, regular person pace. Either I would hear an F or an A word, just because I maybe would want to stop and look at. Dude, when look, when I'm diving with you, we get passed by bacteria. Like the it. stuff floating in the water passes us like beep, beep. That's not even a normal stalactite. Look at how those curled back up because there were microorganisms in there. Wouldn't you want to just a little video? All right. Ten second video of that. Can we Let, do that? Let's keep going. Sure. Dive. How they form. For a long time, the prevailing theory was that they're formed by wind blowing dripping water sideways. That's what I think. But more recent evidence suggests that surface tension caused by a special kind of bacteria may be the cause. Either way, Let me give you a little wink. A dry cave. I don't Not know who said that a minute ago, but it's the wind. Nothing. As we no. keep going, a little Christine tiny bit of credit. Very no. no aliens. Islands. No credit. The crystal clear water flows beneath the forest, the lifeblood of the Yucatan. And most of the time, we're no deeper than 30 feet. Oh, yeah. Just above our heads. They're very a thick. Shallow. Tropical. They're shallow. Jungle. I think our max depth on this week was 70. While some nice. of the formations are opaque, some of them allow light to pass like a flashlight behind a finger. Nice. 1,500 miles. Crystal. Up cave. Is that nice or beautiful? Yeah, look at this stuff. Amazing. Like you said, how can you not want to do this? Our goal is to leave. I want to do it like this afternoon. Steam cave behind. I want to take you so bad to ProTac and their environment, and we're and a we'll bring their guides. The flowstone formation reminds okay. me of a waterfall, frozen in time, sculpted in stone. A formation like this takes thousands of years to form. It's amazing. Finally, it's time to turn back. Another firm rule of cave diving rule is that you thirds. can only use one third of your air to get into the cave. That's a big advantage of a rebreather. I mean, they're, they're diving the whole dive on open circuit. We're going to instead dive a distance that basically says how much gas do we need to carry to get us out from the furthest point on open circuit, knowing how much the heaviest breather breathes, including your plan deco. So there really is a lot of planning where these guys are automatically on rules of thirds. The second they hit a third of their gas, they turn around. So yeah. A little bit of a different thought on rebreathers. You use another third to get back. That leaves the last third for unexpected delays. And we do that too. Yep. With our planning. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This lighting and photography is incredible. Soon we get back to the jump, and Christine spools up her jump line as we cross back to the main line. Oh, I wish they showed her taking turns. The arrows turns. point the way out, because obviously following the line in the wrong direction would be disastrous. This is beautiful photography. I mean, really, next level. Next level. That is spectacular, Jonathan. Mm. I mean, imagine walking through that. It would be impossible. Well, not impossible, but it would be hard to explore this cave if it was dry. That's why I keep saying. Cave diving is better, safer, way less effort. Amazing. People think cave divers are nuts, but look at the things we get to see. One As we swim back to the entrance, agree. and it's a long swim, I have time to think about how far this cave goes. 
We swam only a half a mile into a cave, which is 42 miles long. Can you imagine? But a few years ago, cave explorers linked this cave to another huge system yeah. called Sak Aktun. Then they linked Sak Aktun to a system called Dos Patrick Ojos. Patrick told me that. These three systems together are now the longest underwater cave in the world, stretching 215 miles. And they're not done. I asked Patrick, I said, so is that it? Do you feel like? He goes, no way. These caves, we don't know. They continue. We know they continue. We could explore, he said, for the rest of my life right here in these caves. I wonder, though, I just thought of this. And I don't know, maybe a cave explorer watching this channel can answer this. What if one of these caves goes into another country? You know what I'm saying? Like, what if you're in Mexico and he goes to, I don't know, Belize or whatever. Whatever... Mexico is connected to like can you just keep going and just pop out in Belize like what's up <laughs> maybe you know that's the unknown I, I wonder how the by permitting... the way today I didn't wear a hat in the mm. spirit of spirit of what just freedom <laughs> my new sidewinder configuration feels so free that I just feel free and naked Wow. I'm not going to be I in the, I didn't, I, that's, I'm not going to come in here naked because it's oh too cold. Because it's too cold. We can't unsee that. Okay, here we go. Why are we here? Why can we shoot video like Why this? Why are we here right now? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Finally, we make it back to the cavern zone where we can see the light from the sun. Every day we could do this. Mm. And you really yeah. need two weeks there. Just stay for two weeks. I go for two months. It's amazing. Fortunately, we never went deeper than 30 feet. So even though our dive was two hours long, we have no decompression to do. Beautiful. Ooh. Wow. Man, that, that was, was a great. Stunning. What a gorgeous environment that is. Lucky. My lower back is like on fire. Yeah, because you're <laughs> arch incredibly the whole time. lucky to have visited Nahochna Cheech. You do arch. Never mind the fact that I can brag about diving the longest known submerged cave in the world. It's just a beautiful cave with crystal clear water, almost no current, and shallow enough to stay for hours. Indeed, a treasure of the blue world. Yes. Wow. Goosebumps I got. I mean. Man, Jonathan, I, I, his videography, I, I guess it is the best wow. in the world, right? Would you well, say he's for amazing. caves? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, very, very talented, obviously, underwater videographers and cameramen and all of that. But, you know, the guys at Blue World TV, Jonathan, Todd, Sag, everyone, mm. Christine, um, they do such a good job. We like featuring them on the channel. I, I mean... They have made so much content that this could become, you know, react to <laughs> Blue World TV. We would have content, never-ending content. I mean, they, they've done so, such amazing job. But uh, this one reminded me of this, the dives that you did this week while I was here miserable working and real stuff. Hey, uh, I, but it, I, I thought of you because, remember, I texted you. I text you. Yeah, that makes And me. it's really weird that you would only give me, like, one word texts back. Well... It didn't seem it was two that you sometimes. were exci so excited for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, was but, but, but the whole time, honestly. Very common I, first word, though. The second word was off or you or I took turns. Even though then, the whole time in my heart, and I, and I had to text you this a few times, I'm like, you're coming here a lot. You just didn't understand. I now know. <laughs> we are going there. It's two mm. hours from... Go to Atlanta, two hours. And yeah, I agree. After one time, you're going to be like, oh, this is, I'm. We're moving. You could. Yeah. I mean, lunch is like $3 for the most amazing. Start food dive talk eat. in Spanish. God, and it just is. Just do beautiful. it in Mexico. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm so glad you played this. It actually put me in a really, really good mood. Thank you. It's awesome. Uh, so like I said, we feature Jonathan Bird and Todd and the guys from Blue World TV multiple times. The last time we feature them. They went into a cave that you've also been, Shangri-La. <laughs> and in case you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave it right here. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.